joins us for his weekly appearance. Frank, the fan base is in full-on panic and freak-out mode after a 5 nothing loss to the Dallas Stars. I ask you, for an outsider perspective, should we be freaking out? Settle down. Look, um, last night wasn't pretty. No one's going to sugarcoat that. No one's going to sugarcoat, you know, the varying hiccups that have occurred over the last six weeks. And I think there's right to be concerned about where this is all is heading when you consider the grand picture of you've got very likely now the Vegas Golden Knights in round one. And that series is a coin flip. The defending champs are playing well. They've gonna they're gonna get Tomas Hurdle back. They're gonna get um, potentially, maybe, probably not in the first round, but at some point, Mark Stone back. And they've got an ability to play at a level that could be highly concerning. That said, so can the Oilers, and in a good way. And they've shown stretches of that this year. But I think the one thing that stands out to me more than anything else is this is an Oilers team that's still, for whatever reason, over a three to four year period of time, still has a penchant to beat itself. And it's hard enough in the NHL to run the gamut and beat 15 teams on your way to the Stanley Cup. But if you've also got to beat yourself in the process, then you're going to have a really tough time. Yeah, and I think that's kind of where the frustration comes in on that game last night. Like, there's no denying Dallas is very damn good. There's yeah. no denying. I mean, the Oilers are very damn good as well. And I think we'd be singing a different tune if this was a 2 nothing loss where you go, okay, you lose 2 nothing. Dallas got their goals. You hit three goal posts. Andre stood on his head. You lose those games sometimes. It, it's What adds to the frustration is this is a team who came out of last year's playoffs against the Vegas Golden Knights and talked about how they need better attention to detail and they need to, paraphrasing, avoid those shoot themselves in the foot goals. And last night, we saw them regress right back to where they were against Vegas last year. And what's maybe an area that actually does concern me, Frank, is that it was the big guns last night. Dreisaitl had a bad game. Nurse had a bad game. And they were front and center for a handful of those goals. Yeah, and I think the Nurse one is pretty fair. Like, I think Nurse has, you know, to me, watching, he he's not really had a good few weeks now, not just one game. And he's definitely a contributor to the let's not give up singles or let's give up singles and doubles if we need to. Don't give up the Grand Slam home run mistake. And that's what seems to happen, you know, somewhat occasionally or somewhat frequently with him. So I think it is concerning, but to me, the real angst of what you guys are feeling is just being masked by the score last night. It's, it's what's standing in front of you in Vegas. Had it been an easier matchup, you know, or, or a likely easier matchup, people are probably looking at that game last night going, oh, just one game. Like, you know, yeah, it was a nice measuring stick to show that we've got a lot of work to do, but we'll get there. The fact that all of this work to get back to where the Oilers are, you know, is staring them down in a seven game series, you know, starting in 19 days. Like that's a tough spot. Do you is think that, is that an unfair read of this, of the fan psyche? I, I think people are definitely worried about playing Vegas. I think there's also an added frustration, too, when you look at the way a team like Dallas has built themselves up over the last couple mm -hmm. of seasons and why Johnson's popping home 30 goals and you have the easy headline of you went one pick after the Oilers took Xavier Borgo and we just had to do, for what feels like the hundredth time this year, a 10-minute conversation about <laughs> why can't Dylan Holloway get yeah. in this lineup and play meaningful minutes for you? And it's just like you look at a team like Dallas who surged their way up to being elite and you're an Oilers fan sitting here getting to the midway point of Connor McDavid's career going, there's not a single Ken Holland draft pick playing on this roster right now. And I think it's frustrating to see other organizations do things so well without having the advantage of Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Mm -hmm. And Oilers fans are sitting here going, man, if we could have gotten a hair of that kind of organizational philosophy and organizational success, we'd be sitting here with cups. I think it's a totally fair comment. And what I would say is, 
the least valuable player in the Oilers organization over this last five year run has been Tyler Wright. Um, he's your director of amateur scouting. He's the guy that's supposed to be making these picks that, uh, helps lift this team up and to continue to, um, continue the cycle. Like you have a rolling timeline when you consider the stars and their ability to compete. Everyone was thinking Jamie Ben and Tyler Sagan, the, those are anchors on that team. And now all of a sudden, yeah, their cap hits are tough to carry, but you can put them in second and third line roles if you need to, because you've gotten the, you know, additions that they have from Robertson, from Hintz, uh, Haskinen, Ottinger, and then now you begin to layer in some other pieces in Johnson. And at some point, the AHL's leading scorer in Maverick Bork. And you can just begin to see how incredibly important not just keeping your picks is, but hitting on them when you have them. And so no one in the league has done a better job of that than Dallas. There are other poor examples, but with the Oilers and where they've picked, they should have been in positions to get more than they've gotten out of their team and their, their draft picks. And even some guys like a Broberg, for instance, you know, look through his path and his journey. And to me, like he, he should be an absolute everyday player that has gotten meaningful opportunity prior to this point that there aren't question marks about him and his confidence should be at a high level because he is capable of playing at that level that there was a trust that eroded at some point there between himself and the coaching staff. So there's a big miss, a, a series of big misses from Tyler Wright. And then there's also a development component to it too, that it's, it's not just one. You could, you could be the Columbus Blue Jackets and you can draft like nobody's business, but they suck at developing. And the Oilers have not gotten enough from both parts of that. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it says something like you you don't miss on every single draft pick, right? Like at some point it does come down to the development too of the organization. But my question is, Frank, do you think the Oilers still have a chance to catch Vancouver? Or do you think that dream's over now? There's still two games in hand. I, I know the math makes it feasible. And I've heard Rick Cockett, you know, sounding the alarm bells in Van with the way that they've played. But you have to remember that Thatcher Demko isn't in the lineup. And they've asked a lot of Casey to Smith and he's eligible to come off of LTIR. I think on Saturday, he's getting close to returning and their key is going to be trying to get him to return to form in maybe a two or three game window before the regular season ends. So Demko is a big part of their season story and seven points, even with the two games in hand, like, you win the two games in hand, you're still three back. Vancouver only really needs to go like, I think 500 the rest of the way in probably. And the Oilers can't like, they just need to stack up a few more points and it's going to put it out of reach. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Anon is in the chat and says LMFAO catch Vancouver. I'd be more worried about losing home ice, which you play. Colorado I brought that up place. today. Yeah. I did mention that on DFL. I said, that's a that's a it's a real possibility, um, and there's obviously other seeding races to watch, but the Kings and or Kings and Preds too. What happens there with seven and eight? I mean, I, I'm a, I think we're all assuming at this point that the Kings won't catch Vegas with the way that Vegas has played, but yeah, I mean, this is there are some tense moments for a lot of teams over these next uh, 14 days. Yeah. Um, did you have another Oilers one, or do you want to talk about the line brawl? Uh, I'll ask you one more, okay. Frank. Do you think the Oilers are a tier one contender in the Western Conference? Right now, I do not. And we went through Jason, Gregor, and I on the DFO rundown today, and we ranked our top five Stanley Cup contenders. And that's a dangerous game to play because there's 16 teams in the mix and you're only picking five. But I, I really believe right now that the strength of the West is in the central between Dallas and Colorado. If I were to look at the Pacific division, I think the Oilers have as good a chance as anyone 
to to get out of it, including Vancouver, who's ahead of them in the standings. But I don't know that that makes them the favorite to get out of the West. And that's really all that matters, right? Like, it's not about, oh, that's great. We made it to the final four. Like, that's not going to make anyone feel good, is it? And so I think they're, if I were to stack them up, Edmonton for me would be six on my top five. And that's not pandering to the market. I don't have any Canadian team in the mix in my top five. No Winnipeg, no Toronto, no Van, no Edmonton. And that's also not, um, you know, sitting here in the U.S. waving my stars and stripes. It's just (laughs) I look at the Canes, the Rangers. um, I look at Florida in the east. Those are my three from the east. And in the west, I've got Dallas and Colorado. And that's sort of how I view it right now. I honestly think that's pretty fair. Yeah. Like, especially like I think Dallas and Colorado are both better than Edmonton, but I still think if Edmonton went to the Western conference finals and played either of those teams, it would be a much better result than what happened a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, I would agree with that a hundred percent. Like it would be a coin flip of a series. I just, mm-hmm. uh, for me right now, my money would be on either one of those yeah. two teams from the central. Yeah, putter in the chat. LOL, if we won yesterday, different answer. Like, yeah, newsflash, that's- how the team plays affects your opinion of them. Like, come <laughs> but that's on. also bullshit. I picked Dallas before the season started, and I'm not changing. Yeah, and yeah, All you right. have been on Dallas the whole time. Uh, line brawl yesterday, good old-fashioned scrap between every single player on the ice. 156 pims in the first five minutes of that hockey game. 110 or 120 of them came within two seconds. Frank, um, this was something, I guess, two-parter. What'd you make of the melee? And also, how's the, how do you think the league feels about this? I mean, this is a, a tale as old as time in terms of, you know, this being part of the game. What's What's the issue? I mean, why are they upset that or would they be upset that all of a sudden people were talking about it? Like I saw mainstream news reporters that don't even watch hockey randomly tweeting about the mayhem in Manhattan. I mean, that's, it gets people talking. So uh, for those of you that are in the, please like our sport category, uh, congratulations. Um, I don't think the league, at least to my knowledge, I haven't heard anyone say that they have any issue with it. And the penalties I thought were handed out accordingly. Um, and there were choices to be made too. Like the, both of those teams were without a pair of defensemen for the last 19 or uh, 69 minutes and 58 seconds. So that's, it's not easy playing with four D for that long. Um, I guess overall, um, I love the entertainment factor of it. And I love the coaches jawing at each other, even though like, one of them wrote Curtis McDermott on their lineup card and the other one saw it and then said, okay, I'll put in Matt Rempe. So like, don't play dumb. And I love the response from the devils. Like they were beat up and pushed around by Rempe and the Rangers, you know, not too long ago. And how many times through the course of a season, do we see a team get absolutely rocked by someone? And then they just fold like a cheap tent and a soft win the next game and they bring nothing to the table. It's like it never happened and you never hear about it again. I like that the Devils have some pride in what they're doing, made a statement. And to me, it told me a lot about a you know a Devils team that has had a hugely disappointing season and nothing to play for last night. Told me something about them heading into the summer and next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. My favorite part about that video is... When Barkley Goodrow just skated by whoever the sentiment was, and he just said, "They're like, who do I fight now?" Yeah. <laughs> Did you see right off the hop? So Chris Tierney takes the draw. I don't know if you can, if it's in the clip that you rolled, but you can actually see his face, and he's like, "For the love of God, see." He, so he takes this right here. <laughs> he just skates right by. Him. <laughs> like he, his 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 reaction was quite literally like, "Oh." sakes like i have to do this and then john marino has to go and fight uh andre miller, andre miller. <laughs> how about the guy. like the celebration uh, from andre miller yeah, like it was short. like yeah speaking of too short someone who is massive is vincent de Harnay. oh you wanted to ask what and i will ask right? about him frank is there any update on what he might be looking for this summer and do you think there's a good chance he stays in edmonton or goes no idea i haven't asked um and 
I look, here's the other part about this summer is I think everyone's assuming that a new regime will be in place. Mm -hmm. Um, the assumption is that Ken Holland is not returning as general manager. What, what does that mean in terms of team philosophy? You know, six foot six defenseman has been right up the Ken Holland. Uh, you know, that's an ideal size for him. That That's what he's looking for on his back end. Are the Oilers willing to pay? I don't know if premium is the right word. Are they willing to pay for that moving forward? What, how does the next regime evaluate DeHarnay? It's all still to be decided. Yeah. All right. Uh, I want to wrap up with our great clips inbox question with more than 4,400 hair salons throughout the United States and Canada. Great clips is the world's largest hair salon brand and official hair salon of the NHL. Salons are locally owned and operated seven days a week. And your time's valuable, Liam. Use the Great Clips check-in app, see the wait time, check in on your phone, and get your haircut when you want. Check out greatclips.com. Great Clips, it's going to be great. Frank, which storyline would you prefer to see play out as we head down the stretch into the playoffs? Sidney Crosby gets back into the big dance, or the Philadelphia Flyers finish off this wild underdog season with a playoff appearance? Whew. Um... I think I'm going to go with the flyers and someone's like, Oh yeah, of course the guy from Philly would say that. But my, as much as I would like to see Sid get another crack in the playoffs, because honestly, I don't know when the next chance he's going to get is my answer is I think this flyers team has fought its ass off all year long. Yep. And I think they deserve um, after, you know, what they've been through, some of the pieces plucked off their roster, half their defense core went down with injury you know, in the last eight weeks, it's been tough for them. And they've also had to deal with torts and him calling them soft on multiple occasions. And I just like to see them get in and I don't know that they're going to do any damage, but they haven't shown any quit so far. So see if they can make it happen. Mm -hmm. The Penguins haven't care. earned it. Like does one 10, one good 10 game run get you in. I that's, I don't know. I don't know if that means anything, <laughs> They don't really hand out, you know, awards for earning it or not. But I think there's something to be said for that. If if any one of like the six teams you see on this screen would have had one good 10 game run over the last month, they'd be laughing. They'd be in. Yeah. yeah. And the Flyers were doing that going back to October. They've ba they've basically been in a playoff spot the entire season to get through all of that. And then to crumple in the end would just be the ultimate nut kick. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. All right, there you go. Frank Cervalli, our daily face-off insider. Thanks for doing this, Frank. See you guys. See you, Frank. There you go. Star Mechanical, starmechanical.ca. And shout out to Great Clips. And another shout out to Frank and everybody in the chat. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.